someone's a beekeeper and person who sells honey, one of the questions I get asked is, uh, honey, when it crystallizes, is it bad? And of course the answer is definitely not. So just as an example, I got a couple jars of honey here that were harvested this summer and I left them in the trunk of my car for a few months just in case anyone needed some honey. Pulled them out and they are quite solid. And what this is, is that the glucose crystals in the honey, because honey consists of fructose and glucose, the glucose will actually precipitate out of the solution. There's a, this is a basically a, a honey is a water, a water-based solution of sugar in water. So over time, the glucose will precipitate out and form this solid mass eventually. Um, now, not all honeys do this. It really depends on the source of the honey. So this honey came from Clarkson, a very rural area. So the plant life around here uh, must have um, nectar that is higher in glucose than others. And as comparison, this bottle of honey, which was harvested about the same, really the same time, from a different location, centerline, um, and actually this was in the trunk with these other two about the same amount of time. You can see um, it is, let's see if I can get a bubble, it's not a solid crystal. Now it is darker as well, and that is given also the different uh, the different nectar sources. But you can see here, at least this has got enough liquidity in it so where you can see a bubble going up there. Um, so that tells us that this honey is sourced from nectar sources that are that are lower in glucose and more uh, fructose. Um, but you can also see that this honey is also crystallizing as well because all, all honey will eventually crystallize. So that there is still a substantial amount of glucose in here so that will eventually precipitate out and crystallize. And you can see at the bottom there that we have some crystallization. Um, so you might ask, well, what about the rest of the honey that wasn't in the trunk of your car? Well, here's one that was bottled the same. Again, the same, uh, the same batch, the same honey. This has been in the basement. And so, although opaque, which is strongly suggesting that this is on well on its way to crystallizing, let's see, it isn't quite the solid mass. I'm trying to find a bubble, and uh, we might have trouble finding a bubble. So this isn't as crystallized for sure. It doesn't have as much opacity in it, um, but it is pretty well on its way. And if I open it up, I'm sure I would uh, find a lot more thickness. And there may not be an air bubble in there to begin with because I try to top these off really well. So, I think, again, visually you can see one is just white. Um, interestingly, the ideal temperature for crystallization is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, you can imagine over the fall, uh, the trunk of a car, day and night, left overnight, it's probably pretty close to 57. It's only closer to 57 than my basement which uh, thanks to a leak in my heating, my heating element is probably warmer than it should be. So we're gonna show you how to resolve this if you'd like. Uh, one of my honey buyers was actually saying that she really likes it, the kids really like it crystallized because you can get smeared on there. And indeed, um, uh, it's, it's common in Europe to crystallize your honey uh, purposefully, like making ice cream where you um, you basically, you, you force the crystallization process, but you force the crystals to be very, very small, very, very, very tiny. So you get a very creamy feel on your tongue, versus this is going to probably be a little more, a little more grainy, um, but it is spreadable with a knife versus squeezable. Um, but anyway, um, I will, if you care to liquefy this, I'm going to show you how we liquefy it. It's very easy. Okay. So we're going to melt these crystals in the sugar solution that is now become completely, really completely solid. So essentially we're going to heat this up, which will melt the sugar crystals. But we don't want to heat it up too high because we don't want to hurt the enzymes. Uh, so the best way I find for doing this is you start with some boiling water. You kill the heat. So take the heat off. And you're just going to put this in there and just let the heat do its work to heat this up. It's not going to heat it up to a point where it's going to damage enzymes, but it will be heated up to a point where it will melt the crystals. And before, before I even had the water boiling, I did put this in there to make sure that the water displacement wouldn't, uh, wouldn't get dramatic here. We'll make sure it worked. 
and my labels are waterproof, uh, so they should stay on there okay. And all you gotta do is just let this sit, you can walk away from it. Other methods will have the heat on low, um, but I found, especially with glass bottles, that I'll forget about it and then you melt the bottles and that's really not good now, is it? So better off to be able to just let this sit, come back in a couple hours and see where we're at, repeat it if necessary. Uh, so about an hour, 90 minutes or so, water's cool to the touch. You can see uh, we have um, a lot of transparency at the honey at the bottom. You can see obviously the water level is indicated. Uh, so I could reheat this um, maybe upside down if I get the lid on there good. Or I can just use my spoon to kind of push through that. Um, I think I'll probably just repeat the process up to, upside down and finish it up. Okay, so maybe just about 20 minutes later, I had it inverted. Uh, it's repeated the same process, and it, it's it's done. It is now liquid honey. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> the inverted thing I never did before. Um, the one thing to watch for, metal expands when it gets heated. Uh, so the cap was a bit loose, so I gave it a tight a tighten. Of course, when the cap cools, it's probably going to be uh, hard to get off. And so back to our controls. So this is the one I just heated up. You can see that bubble just kind of moves. Just liquid, nice warm honey. Warm to the touch, not hot. Uh, it'd be good to put a thermometer to it and see what you get. And then this is the his twin. So as control, you can see very opaque, solid, no bubbles. In fact, you got a bit of a bubble there that's not moving versus this. And this one that was downstairs in the basement versus this, you can see there's still a difference there. Um, one is um, on its way to crystallizing. Again, per natural. Um, and even this one is um, still opaque. Um, but this one is definitely the, the liquefied one. You can see through it. Alright, that's it. Thank